bunch of old electrical appliances. Um, most of these have been around for many, many years with me, and some of them are quite recent. Um, Hooper Constellation, of course, this will need a full going over, a paint job, a service, a safety check. It's, I don't know if these things are supposed to be earth, but it hasn't got an earth on it, and it's a metal structure, so I think it should. This frost fan is a recent addition. I got it a very, very short time ago from a lovely lady in Ormond. A lovely Sunbeam Beta Mix when I first moved out of home 30 years ago. I bought this because I thought it looked cool on the kitchen bench. Um, around the same time, this electric clock here, where is it there? And that fan was from Susie's auntie. That's been here for many years. The desk lamp over there, that was on a rubbish pile. This fan here was... Oh, probably 15 years ago. I've never done anything with it. This video is all about this Warner Drayton desk fan. We've just done a resto on it and we'll have a look at that in a moment. This fan's identical to the one that was uh, in my brother's room as a baby. <laughs> we don't put fan heaters in baby's rooms anymore but I managed to get this from England about 15 years ago. It's still got its British plug on it. Floor polisher, very sad looking thing, was from again my childhood and that fan over there was one that I restored around 30 years ago. Um, to put in that house I was talking about before. So, this video is about this Warner Drayton. This needed a good going over. I thought um, I could just give it a clean up. I ended up restoring it. So, some of these things will need just a bit of a clean up. Um, that frost fan, for example, I'd just be inclined to check the bearings and the wiring in it. Um, and others we probably won't touch. Might clean some up. I don't know. We'll just see how it goes. Leave a comment if you if there's anything here that you've got any interest in that you'd like to see more of and we can make a start but there's quite a few other things here there's other oh, there's some tv sets and some old hi-fi gear and there's uh, a couple more fans there's a few other bits and pieces really i've always had a fondness for this old stuff but um let me know if there's anything you want to see more of and we'll try and accommodate it but uh in the meantime i hope you enjoy while i was um shooting parts uh, for the car. Somebody has piped up in one of the comments and said, nice Warner Drayton. I didn't know what a Warner Drayton was, and I googled it, and it turns out to be a fan, which is what this guy is. Don't know much about it, um, as far as I know it works, although the cord does look a bit sus. And it was given to me by friends of mine when they closed their workshop, so it lived under a table in an automotive workshop in the lunchroom with the express uh, purpose of keeping their legs cool in the summer. Don't know much about it. Um, I'm just going to pop it in there. Give it some power. Hopefully it doesn't blow. And we'll see if she runs. Which it does. I kind of expected it to. And it's oscillating and it's doing everything it's supposed to do. And it's powerful as well. So I'm just going to unplug it because I want to show you something. Because I was quite worried when I plugged it in. Because the cord is split and it's really stiff in that area. It's like it's split and somebody's gone and put glue or something in it. Not very good. Anyway, I guess the first thing to do is to... Just to see where this is going to take, because it might need restoring. I'm just going to move this chair out of the way. Um, in which case, there's a few things I like doing with this type of thing, and that's hydroblasting, um, to get rid of paint and all that sort of stuff. Um, the grill has a few bends and twists in it, but it might clean up alright. And I might not even bother restoring it, I might just clean it. Um, see where that takes us. I think that pops off, yes I might, but I don't know how that blade comes out, I have no idea, oh, that's a screw on it, hang on a minute, now age wise, that's a plastic blade, this could be, I know in the 70s when we lived in Yarrawonga, or my whaler, there was a shop called Permuant, I can't get that off, and they had a, a five-speed fan. I wanted it. I was only a child. 
and that was a plastic body plastic blade that's a steel body plastic blade so I'm tipping late 60s maybe early 70s there's just a grub screw here there we go it's got a sort of a steel hub on it and there's this grill held in it looks like the grill is actually trapped in the motor housing. Now it's got some battle scars and some weird paint adhesion issues, I think, but it doesn't matter. We can get our way through there. Oops, I'm just going to pop this lid off. And it's all metal construction, die cast, I would imagine. Nope, not yet. Yep, we got that one. We got that one. And that should come up with the grill in situ, which I can take off, I would think. Like that. And the rear grill assembly. And it shows us the motor. Little lubricating hole there. It's a real small funnel. And it looks fairly good. And that motor will probably just lift out. There's another funnel in the front which correspond with these small plugs. So we fill those with oil, I'd imagine. And we're good to go. And we've got the cord here, and the cord feels a little bit stiff on the outside, but we can replace it, or at least do something with it. Take these bearing caps off. I'll turn it around so you can see what I'm doing. That wrapping there is a bit loose on that winding. We do have to be quite careful. And this funnel is very interesting. I've never seen anything like that. That's okay. And we'll just take the back one out. And that's the front there, and that motor should now lift and the armature or the rotor can be removed safely. So let's put that to the side. And there's an oscillating mechanism. And that should just lift off, which it does. This one has a circlip in it. So we can pull that out. And that will relent as well. We assume it will relent. What else have we got here? That's a bit sloppy down there. We've also got the gauze in here for the bearings lubrication. We need to keep that. That's supposed to be oil rich at the moment, it's oil dry. And the same with that one there. Right. Now I reckon we remove the power cord, or the keeper for the power cord, and the all-important earth. And that power cord should come out, which it does. Sweet. Okay. How are we looking so far? Not terribly badly. Let's take that out, see what happens, eh? There's a grub, there's a tightening screw there. That's a roll pin of sorts. I don't think that comes out. And then that oscillating mechanism should come out.
This is where we're just blindly pulling crap off. And then that guy, oops, should come out, which it kind of does. And there's a shim in there as well, as well as a scented bronze bush, which is what that looks like there, which is pretty cool. So we'll just take that little tightening screw out. That should come out, even though I don't think it's going to, because there's still a roll pin in there, but there is a screw in the bottom. Now that looks like it's got a bit of cracking in it. But it's not too bad. It is missing that little felt bush. So anyway, look, we can pop that back in there. At the moment, I just want to get into the electricals of it. Throw that out of the way and let's have a look. Our little feet have gone. Our protective feet for furniture and that sort of stuff. So we'll just pop these screws out. There's a bit of intricacy here. I might have spoken too soon. We've got a transformer. A line coming in, a line going out, the terminal block. There's no filtering capacitor there though. That's something of a surprise. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I think we just blindly keep pulling crap off. So I'm going to cut that. I'm going to move that so I know I can use it as a template. And also, I know exactly how it's rooted and all that sort of stuff. So I'll just leave that to the side for now and have some more tea. But look at the quality. It's cast, so the earth cable just fits in. Um, the wash is a snug fit against the casing. That's why I like this sort of thing. They're really... It's really good. It's high quality. Longevity is amazing. It's the way to go. And they operate so well. You know, a small bit of maintenance and they just keep going and going. In fact, it's quite astonishing how flimsy modern ones are. In fact, you can pick up a, a pedestal fan for $15 when they're on special and you won't get through the summer with one because the pedestal on them is very flimsy folded metal which you'd be making the mistake of standing on, which I have. Um, they fold, they buckle and the whole thing goes over. And my daughter, when she was younger, grabbed the thing from the motor at the back, the casing, and the casing broke off in her hand. Of course, then that's really dangerous. Terribly poor quality. They shouldn't get through, actually. They shouldn't be available to sell in this country. So we've got a terminal block. We've got a transformer. When I reassemble this, I might reassemble it um, vertically, if that makes any sense. Whoa, struth, what was that? That was a bit of tube. And there we have it. There we have it. Very nice bit of kit. Okay, so that can just sit off to the side and be safe. Stuff a wash. That's the base. <clears throat> it's in sound condition. I don't think it's cracked anywhere. It's just filthy. Um, the lower motor housing, same deal. We've got these scented bushes in here, so we've got to make sure they're lubricated once we've finished washing and painting this stuff. If we're going to paint it, then that's the lid. Again, in sound condition. Um, <clears throat> we can also wash these grommets. In fact, when we put these grommets back, we can flick them around 180 degrees and get the fresher side of them. And the hub, of course, is cracked in there. This looks like someone's been, because it's an exposed hub when this, this thing's running and it looks like someone's been throwing pencils and stuff in there. So we can wet sand that out and make it look a bit nicer. But I will put an epoxy in there just to keep that from splitting any further. Maybe even drill out that like a little bit of that so it doesn't go through to the other side and fill it up with glue this oscillating swivel is a bit of a worry in that it's got a crack in it again we can drill the end of the crack to stop it going further not just that but this is actually quite easy to make with delrin or acetyl um if you've got access to a lathe that's actually really quite simple to make that sort of part and you'll make it out of dough and it'll be tougher than the original part Fan grills, well, they're grotty and dirty. This is going to be more of a paint job type thing, I would think, depending on how it cleans up. And the other thing with that is we've got to ascertain if we don't mind it being a bit rough, 
seeing how much it cleans up and leaving it or giving it a full, a full paint job. The blades, we need to clean these to really see what we've got, but from what I can see so far, they're actually really, really good. They're just filthy, that's all. And the blades are what make the fan, do you know what I mean? So, I mean, if they're cracked, it's kind of game over. In some ways, and I've got to figure how to get that plastic hub out, because I want to get it out, and I don't know how. And I've got some degreaser, so I can see how this comes out. And knowing my luck, that's bonded on, which would be a massive pain in the neck. That would be a huge pain, because the one thing I do not want to do... Actually, that just looks like it lifts out. Somebody else watching this is going to be going, what are you doing, you idiot? I know how to get those out. Anyway, I'm going to clean it and have a good look to make sure I don't screw it up. Right, well the cleaning agent of choice is sugar soap. Um, it's easier than, um, that's getting quite warm. It's easier than um, sitting there with a spritz bottle and kitchen cleaner. You can see there's some scratches on there. Anyway, we'll chuck this stuff in. That center hub literally just clicks in and out, but I was worried about it being um, so brittle, given the age of it. So I'm just going to do that by itself quickly. And it's a translucent thing. It's, it's actually a beautiful piece. Lovely piece of kit. Um, anyway, I'm just going to throw all this stuff in. And the base. That'll be interesting because... Just to see what the finish on it's like. I don't want to paint it if I don't have to, but it looks like I might have to. It does look fairly shabby. Anyway, that can sit there and soak. And we'll wash these bits up. The blades are also quite interesting in terms of how well that stuff stuck on. It looks like it'll leave straight off. We had a clear one. I think my sister had it years and years ago. And it never cleaned up properly. And some of that stuff around the periphery is quite difficult to get off, but it's not that bad. You'll find though, if you use sugar soap, it's very cost effective because it's a concentrate. And it only sort of runs in at about $3 or $4 a bottle or so. So it, it is a very economical way of cleaning up parts. And it's also good for getting rid of things like um, silicon um, cleaners and stuff off um, car parts, like interior trim parts, if they have to be repainted, it's almost impossible with silicon there because it causes fry ups and all sorts of things in the paint. I've cleaned this stuff up and it looks all right. Um, a few, you know, flaky bits on there. It doesn't look like there's any um, primer or anything under there. I think it's just enamel that's been, been blown over. You can see there, it just scrapes off. So, you know, I'm sort of of the opinion that it's probably better to hydroblast this stuff. I'm not going to do this one though, because you've got your bushes in there, and I don't want them damaged, and I don't want to take them out. I just want to leave them where they are. Um, but certainly, you know, the base that can go, it's a beautiful clean casting. There's no cracks, there's no stress rushes. I mean, it's a rotational thing, so there shouldn't be any. Um, these have been painted after they've been assembled, so I'm just going to leave that in. Um, there's the, the thing that worries me though, um, is the grill. These are really fine. And the rear one looks alright, it's dirty. Um, I have cleaned it, there's a bit of surface rust on it. But, you know, when you get on the inside of the front, it's really quite rusty. So, and it's also really, really fine too, it's so easy to bend um, and misshape. So, I'll seek advice and I'll see what he says about that. I use John at Furniture Gully Hydroblasting. This pit just sort of snapped in. That's in beautiful condition. Airflow 12 and of course the fan blades. Flawless, you can't even, that's as good as new. So I'm not worried about that. The only thing I'll do is I'll fix up the little hub bit to look a bit smoother. But there's nothing wrong with that. They've come up lovely. Very retro 70s type look. But in the meantime I think I'll go away and I'll get this stuff done rather than trying to do it myself if you know what I mean. 
there's a pad that holds the top of the motor winding in which is glued in so I might just take that out and then re-adhere it later and it kind of went like that but that stays behind I'll just put that there and the rest of it I can take with me it's a Warner Drayton model 21 slash 6 forward slash 6 250 volt 50 hertz AC only 0.4 amps uh, 240 times 0.4 96 watts so it's quite a, a thirsty motor in terms of wattage right well we've got a couple of bits and pieces back from the hydroblaster um, we've got the top of the fan we're going to glue that little bit in there that sort of retains the motor I can't remember how it went did it go that way? it went that way I think um, and there's the base, it's a gorgeous casting beautiful uh, also the bottom housing I decided <coughs> pardon me, not to blast, I didn't want to sort of interfere with the bearings and bushes and all that sort of stuff in there and I just thought you know what it's easier to just tape over that you can see it's very thin in the coating there so it doesn't really matter, you don't see much of that but just around the casing we'll just paint it scuff it, prime it, paint it um, of course the grill was the thing that was the most concerned the back was all right but this was the front or is the front and you can see it's slight pitting there um oh that's broken that's not great i wonder if i might be able to i might try and solder that just that one there we'll just check that out actually now that has come at a time when i wasn't expecting it so i'm going to try and solder it I was going to wash this down and start painting stuff, but I want to paint uh, this as well. And I can't even see where it was now. It was around here somewhere, wasn't it? There it is. Um, I don't want to plate those. If I was going to plate them, I'd want them chrome. But I don't think it's worth doing chrome on a fan that's worth 60 bucks. Uh, the other thing is that large fan we found in the rubbish pile is rusted. It's poor quality chrome. Um, I'll go and see if they'll do that too. It'll come up looking crummy because the, the chrome is obviously pitted or the steel's pitted because of the rust. But I think it'll offer, well, it will offer superior um, corrosion resistance. So I'll get that dipped as well. Um, and I ended up relenting on what I said. Um, these are XC Falcon parts um, for the car restoring. And I've got them hydro blasted at the same time. And of course, there's our fan base. And I'll get that plated. It saves me having to paint it. Soldering iron. It's another vintage product. Um, I'm just going to try and put a bit of heat into this. I tried this other, um, it's not quite warm enough. I tried this thing, but it was a little bit, I couldn't regulate the temperature very well. It kept getting too warm. So the other alternative is I'm really careful with the welder. I'd sooner weld it, to be honest. Yeah, I think I might uh, need to weld it. Just don't know how successful that's going to be because that doesn't seem to be doing what I want it to do. Well, I can't see this being quite much being too successful. I think this is just going to blow apart, and I've never tried to weld anything this fine. Soldering didn't work, so I'll try if I can see where the hell I'm going. That's dirty crap because of the solder. But we stuck. That's good. And you can't see it from the other side. But that is stuck pretty well, so that's cool. So there was another one. That one there's bent. But I can bend that back. The middle spot weld is very, very slight. So you got a big one, little one, big one, little one, big one, little one. And I think that's to keep heat minimized. Hey Rose. Are you nearly ready to oh, there's another one there? No, Hang on a minute. I've got to get that one in. Right, there are three, and I've just popped a little parallel line around each one. So there's one there, one there, and one there. It's 
it's that quick. Right, here we're going. Good, perfect. That nearly blew through, if you can see that. I'm not sure if you can or not. Is the camera still rolling? Yes, it is. <laughs> That's not very tidy. But it's there. It's just such small, delicate stuff. Right, I hope you can see. I fixed that clock. Um, I actually tried to solder them with this. That's a rather lovely retro thing. I remember this when I was about five. My father using it. It's still hot, so I can't grab there. Burko, soldering iron. And um, I learned to use it at a very, very young age. Dad showed me. Right, so what we've got is the base. And we've got a few other bits, if I can find them. We've got the two grills, which we know about. And, and the top. So what we need to do is we need to prep wash these. I'm just going to use old prep salt. Preparation solution. And just wash off. Um, any of the residue that might be on there. For example, you can see it splash mark. Everything that's hydroblasted, they dip in a solution to stop it corroding. That won't it's die cast, but I think it's just a procedure sort of thing they've got. Um, but because we're using an etch primer, um, an etch primer has phosphoric acid in it, and so that will bite into the metal. And this is just die cast. I mean, there's nothing fancy about this stuff at all, but I still want it to stick. Now, in the factory, when it was new, they would have just painted it in enamel, but it was probably baked on. I'm not sure. It seems to have been a pretty reliable coating, though. Right, in order to do this, we're going to be using an edge primer. I'm giving this fan an automotive paint job. And when you lay this stuff down, it actually needs to be quite thin. It's a very thin coating you give it. I don't think there's enough in there for for this, but I'm just going to mix it up. You should always stir, never shake. So I'm breaking the golden rule. And I always keep some mixed up anyway, so when I've finished a job, I can use it. You know, something else will come up which I need to use it for. The other thing I do is knock holes around the periphery there and tie that little um, valley if you like and it drains back um, back into the can so you can't put it on like that you've got to reduce it further or thin it further if you prefer and the other thing you can do to stop it splashing out when you knock it down I'm just going to knock it gently in that area just put a rag over it now for this fan we're going to just be using GP thinner or general purpose thinner I'm just going to pop that much in. I've no idea how much that is. And stir him up. And it's just watery. Now this isn't a full, this is a coating, but it's not like a... I'm going to be able to thin that a bit more, I think. Let's say we just pop a tiny bit more in. So good luck. There we go. That will be fine. Now this is just, yeah, to bite into the metal. It's not a coating which is like a high full primer or anything like that. It's just to make stuff stick. Pop that there. And I'm using a touch-up gun. It's got a one millimeter nozzle, pardon me. Load some into the gun. I should use a filter, but again, I'm not. I'm just gonna turn this here now. Jesus. That's another thing the dog did, digs holes. You can see from not using a filter paper there's a lot of muck coming out, but I don't think it matters. These are horrible things to try and paint because they're just so intricate and fiddly. 
So I think I'm going to rough this up. I should do a match now, but I need more time to think about it. I'm just going to scuff that a bit, and then I need to prime all these other parts. Now, we've got them in etch. The good thing about having black etch is when you put the uh, high fill primer on, which is this grey stuff, you can see exactly where you've been and where you need to go. Right, well, I've had a look around. I don't have anything I like in terms of colour, really. The only things I can come up with are coming up with some sort of creamy colour, which is what that is, which is what the cars are painted in and pulling it down a bit, or at least changing it a bit. I can't find my steering stick though. I don't want to make too much of an adjustment to it. That's XY Falcon saddle. I'm going to mix it in here. And I can see a difference straight away. And I can reference it against another colour I've got. I might give it a tiny bit more, just a smidgen. And that would be more than enough. That might do it. I don't know if you can see the difference. Right there. I think that'll do. And I don't even think I need to reduce it anymore. I'm just a bit worried I might not have enough there. Looks baby bum smooth. Um, now is the top. These are the bits you see. You can see that black coming through there, but it doesn't matter. These are the bits that you see and that are quite tactile. The top of the motor and also, you know, the stand where around where the switches are. That's alright, that's cool. And I think the rest of it's probably alright. That's the lower casing. This is just a bit of 600. Right there. Let's load the gun and give it a shoot. Right, well I've got them painted. I haven't cleared anything yet, but I'm not happy with it because it's gone badly. And the reason is it's turned out pinkish, which I didn't want. The cream I used is a Ford Wimbledon White, and I've painted two cars in that. Right, so I painted both of these Ford Falcons in Wimbledon White. It's my go-to cream colour. Um, I like it. It's got a lot of red in it, which sort of richens the colour up a bit. I mixed it with the brown. The brown has a lot of red in it too, so now I've ended up with a pink fan. And I didn't really want that. I was shooting for an almond colour. And it wasn't immediately obvious when the paint was wet, but as it's dried, it just doesn't look good. I'm not happy with it. So, I either have to repaint it, which means buying colour, which I don't want to do. But I'm going to try something. I'm going to put a little bit of black in the clear. And that could go really badly. But we'll try it anyway. It has to be painted anyhow. I'm going to do that on a car. <laughs> on a fan. I'm going to try. I've never done it before. I did find another can of white though. I have got some more white. But it's stark white. It's the Nissan Bluebird colour that I've got. So, look, we're just going to... And if I waste a bit of this and so on and so forth, well, who cares? Well, there we go. It's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but it has got rid of a lot of that pinkiness to it. Um, there's still a little bit there, but you know what? Who cares? I think it's going to be fine. It's not what I wanted, but um, I don't want to spend any more time on it, but I have learned quite a lot out of it. And I think sometimes the, the lessons you learn are sort of more valuable than the article itself. All right. I want to have a look at this rotor. And there's a bit of well that doesn't look too bad. These bushes, snug fit, look like brass, but I think they're scented bronze. Yes, they are. So for the purpose of knowing how this goes back together, that is the rear one. Put there. What does this look like? There's a bunch of shims with a felt between it. 
and there's that. And if this is cracked, I might have to make a new one from Doran. That doesn't look bad at all. And you'd have to be careful machining this because, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, because it would, um, it's a very, very um, certain length, if you know what I mean. So anyway, we can clean this up later. I'm not worried about that. That just fits on there. And then we've got these two. There's a, like a fiber washer and a steel washer and a felt washer that goes there. This one being the front one has the same arrangement. Um, now you can't use grease on these. These, if you remember, have a, a funnel arrangement of these little guys here where the oil goes down and sits in that felt gauze in the housing. Um, and therefore it gets lubricated. So I'm just going to put some oil in here and let them drink it. A bit more. Hopefully this little plastic thing doesn't leak. And that can stay like that for a couple of days. Um, normally a day. There might be a, a recommended, um, what do you call it? A recommended uh, way of cleaning them, but I'm not going to do that at the moment. I'm just going to put them in there. And they can sit. So I've got the pivot for the lower housing. Oh, actually, it's the pivot for the head. And I've drilled out the crack, the end of the crack, and dug it out with the Dremel. And also around that sort of part there. Thankfully, there's a steel pin through it, which a screw goes in into. So if it cracks or gives any trouble again, the, the head of the fan will get a bit wobbly, but it won't break off. Having said that, if that does happen, this isn't a difficult part to make with uh, from Delrin, which will be a lot tougher than that. Um, the other thing is the center. I've just been sanding those little marks off, and that will, oh, what is this, 1200, I think. Um, once I've done that, I can hit it with 2000 and polish it, and you'll never see it. It'll be really, really good. I'll just put a little bit of a epoxy behind there just to hold it, um, to stop that crack going any further than it did. Um, this is just a matter of trial fitting, and that fits, so that's rather sweet. So it goes in from the other side, I'll just pop a bit of grease on and we're good. Okay, okay, we're starting to put it together, it looks quite nice. We've got the switches in, and the top's still like that. I've used some of the power cord for the, the cord that goes up to the head of it because the original one was stiff in some places and a bit mucky and I couldn't clean it so well. That's the old bit there which we can just put it in. Underneath, it strikes me as odd because the base of this thing won't fit on because the transformer protrudes. I don't know why they didn't put it on that lower tier down there. Maybe they did, maybe that's not the original one, I'm not sure. But anyway, we've got the wire rooted in, we've just got to wire it up. I've left the old ones there so I know the length that they're supposed to be cut to. And obviously loops like that will solder to make them more, I don't know, conducive to a good connection, I guess. And then we'll put this new cord on the back. And the new cord is one I got in 1982, um, it was in a bounty of stuff that a friend's dad imported in. It's a, a Mitsubishi part, and it's one of these fabric coloured or fabric type ones. You've got to watch some of these because apparently some of them had asbestos in them. But it's basically like you'd find on an electric iron. It's got this sort of thing on it here. I'm going to try and get that off. No, that's not successful. Or maybe I can move it. I can see myself hurting myself doing this. No, no, we're good. Oh, look at that. It came off. And I can just use these. Um, and I think that's going to look fantastic. I've just got to find a sort of an oldie worldy plug to go on there. So I've just got to wire that up. I'll have to solder um, bits of it together in preparation for the connections, but otherwise it's all looking fairly good. Well, we've got a bit of it together. I've got the oscillating system. I've rewired this bit up here using the bit of the old cord. We've got our little felts in there for oil and we've got our terminal. Um, it's all, I've got to use the same insulation and everything and soldered. You can see on the originals it's all soldered up. And so I've done that as well. Hopefully that thing doesn't come out, that oscillating thing. And they're all soldered as well into a loop for the earths and it's all together down the bottom so that's cool uh, and also that screws in 
and it's getting dirty. So all we need to do really is pop the motor together. I've got the rotor down there. Um, the bushes, the what do you call them, the centered bronze bushes are over there and we've just got a bit of other hardware. What I do need to do though, because they're hard as a rock, is they're the um, rubber feet that go underneath it. So we'll stick those in. I have to make some new ones or buy some new ones or something. That's not from there. And then we can pop it together and test it out. A wee bit of shopping. Um, oh, that's just a bit of urethane for the rear vents of the car I'm restoring. And this is a bit we're after. The base of the van. The rest of this is just sort of guard brackets. Um, again, for the car I'm doing, which aren't relevant to this project. Headlight brackets. Look how well they come up. Anyway, but this is the bit we're interested in for our van. All of the rubbers from the lid, or from the base, were destroyed. Um, they were just perished. Half of them were off. It was just a mess. So I found these um, feet, and they've got, I don't know what they're off. I've had them for years. They're just sitting in a little sort of parts thing. But I found some washers too from my wonderful father-in-law who passed a few years ago. And they're going to be fine in there like that and then I think because this sits proud of the base and then we'll just have to pack it up with washers there so I'll just wrap some tape around three of them or something and then just stick it behind them but that's the best solution I can come up with for the feet um, and that just means furniture is protected and it's better so I'm just going to clean them up they've got paint on them I, I really don't remember what I got them off they'll work well and they'll sit like that. Cool. Sort of wrapping them in tape means they'll stay where they're put. And hopefully that is sufficient because if you do it loose, you'll be there to the middle of next year trying to <laughs> pick them up and redo it. And it's earthed as well, straight into the case. Right, so I'm going to get the wiring here. Can you see? I hope you can see and I hope it's focused. Power lead comes in, earthing straight onto the case. Um, of course, the motor is also earthed onto the case. Actives come into the side. Neutrals are both tied together. This active comes through underneath the transformer to the off switch. When you go to first speed or high speed, number one or whatever it is, that bridge is there and sends that straight active down into the motor so it goes full speed. The transformer also picks up its power from there. And then, of course, there's your second and third winding for your second and third speed. Um, when you select two or, two or three, yeah. So, it's all good. I think I can put the cover back uh, right now. So, I'm not going to do it on the bench here, because I'm going to sort of nurse it between my legs and do it in my lap. Okay. So, we've got our little base on. And that looks lovely. Um, we can wet sand this and buff it so it's like a car. I'm not going to bother. Um, I, don't want, I don't really want to. I guess the first thing we've got to look at is, we've got to look at the rotor. I guess the first thing, I'm just going to fill these up, or start soaking them. It's cold, so the oil's quite viscous. I'll just let that soak in a bit. Seated bronze bushes have been soaking, so we're just going to pop them over and do the same with the front, and then we just pop him together and Bob's your uncle. Of course, we don't want too much oil swilling around in here. And this thing goes inside, hang on, we might just give it a bit more oil. It's easier doing it now than it is filling those little funnels up. Anyway, we just put him in and there's a show, there's a ledge, there's a little mark at the top there. And this will sit in in a certain way. When it's further forward, it's there. Good. 
So that sits there, that sits there. Rotor spins. Okay, we can connect him up. And that sits on here. And it might be a bit challenging because I've probably got too much terrace on that lead. And we can just pop him down. Right, now, that all looks rather good. There's a bit of inflate there, but that's what it seems to have had. The other thing is, the funnels go in a funny order. They sort of go like that and like that. So they face the centre and then the funnel goes on the other side and it's got a little thing to stop it. Um, coming out the oil coming out it'll drip off that extended bit there into the felt or gauze I don't know what you want to call it I don't want to over tighten these because they're resting on plastic right, I think that's right and the motor can't move and that can't move so that's nice and free I might just pop a little bit of grease on that wheel And this is high temperature bearing grease, so you wouldn't use Vaseline or anything because it would liquefy in here. And that should be it for the motor. I think that's going to be fine. The lubrication holes are just... I dropped it too, I've got a scratch in it, under there. So that should line up with those two funnels. Uh, the next thing is, of course, the grill. I just realized the camera wasn't on. This is pretty difficult to get on there without scratching, but I managed to do it by feeding it around and in. So that vertical bit goes there. I've double checked in here, everything looks okay. It's all moving the way it's supposed to. The wiring's in, nothing seems to be under any duress. I think it's gonna be fine. So we can just trap those bits there in those little rebates. There's two little holes that they that the grill sits into. Doing what I want it to do. Here we go, that's it. And then that guy should just fit in and sit down and do what it's supposed to do. Well that seems fairly good. I'm still in the throes of repairing that um, other thing, what do you call it, the hub for this blade. You can even feel the air coming off there. It's quite astonishing how good these are. It's got that lovely pop too, so you know it's a beautiful fit. And the only thing I need to do is going to make sure that's in the right spot. There's a little area that it sits in. Excellent. I'm well happy with that. Right, well, I've just got this bone. It's my go-to oh, tool if I don't want to scratch stuff. And that is beautiful. Let's have a look. Bring him up a little bit. That way he's looking at me. It's not hitting anything. Uh, that little... Oh, look at that. Some crap on there. Uh, that little cap can be put in whenever. It doesn't matter. But we do have this rather lovely um, garnish, for want of a better term, that'll fit in there. It just clicks in. It's got three little protrusions. There's not much meat on them to hang onto this, I must say, but I think it's going to be alright. And there it is. The, the clamping screw doesn't work terribly well, but that looks absolutely beautiful. Only a couple of things left now. I've Put a bit of glue behind that centre hub. This was really messed up. There are still one or two annular marks there. But it's not too bad. I think it's going to be fine. Next to what it was anyhow. So I'm going to click that in. You can still see the crag. Hopefully it doesn't give me any grief. And we've got this 
plug. This is a new one, and the new ones are signified by that insulator there, um, making it a bit safer. They have a strain on them, a, a sort of a relief thing. I'm leaving that off just in the interest of making it look old, and this isn't going to come to any great amounts of work, but I'm just going to throw that in. So the other thing is modern plugs are all marked. The earth, of course, is green. The neutral's got an in there. The A is active. Um, <clears throat> very interesting. Very easy on these. Black's neutral. Red's active. The newer ones are blue and brown. Active and neutral. I always think of active as brown because if you go near touching it, you're going to crap yourself and poo is brown. So anyway, <laughs> I'm going to put this on and we'll give it a road test. Right, so I've got them in. Very important to show them down the bottom. And because I had to take a little bit of insulation back, I'm going to use fabric tape, fabric electrical tape. And roll a bit of that round. And that will stop any further fraying. I use this stuff on all the car restorations. It's absolutely great. And that plug top will just go over and we squeeze it in. Right, well, we've got it on, so we can plug it in. See if it works. Just see if we can get some oscillation on it. And to do that, we've just got to loosen that a bit. Is it in out to the side? I think, isn't it? It's doing everything it's supposed to do, isn't it? I'm watching that cable there just to make sure it's not too tight. I've got the right length. Some noise coming from the oscillator. But I think it's just a teething thing. So we've done alright. Um, thanks very much for watching this. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's something I haven't done videos like this before and I just thought it was worth having a crack at it. So I'm very pleased with how the thing looks. I think it looks lovely. And you know. It's a testament to its styling, I think. But anyway, look, hope you enjoyed this. Take good care of yourselves. Um, let me know if you want me to do any more stuff like this. I've got loads and loads of vintage appliances. And uh, I'll see you soon.
What do you reckon? Let's hear it. Jesus. <laughs>